Okay, folks, here we go. It's coming. Are you ready? Are you ready for the transformation? And I got to tell you, you don't really have a choice. What I'm about to discuss with you all today is very likely to happen if something else doesn't happen first to stop it. This will be the universal one world language. AI. A weirdly candid interview with Elon Musk, new AI chatbot about Elon Musk. Grok, an artificial intelligence chatbot that Musk recently launched on X, the platform formerly known as Twitter, for all US based premium plus subscribers. Grok uses X posts and reams of other data to answer user questions. The program isn't actually intelligent, at least not in the same way humans are. Nevertheless, speaking with the Times in fun mode, a nominally snarky alternative to OpenAI's ChatGPT text generator, although the dialogue turned out to be fairly staid, Grok was able to carry on a full conversation about what Musk is like as an employer, businessman, and public figure. Here we go with this. Grok wasn't renaming Twitter X bad enough. I wouldn't want to talk to anything named Grok. You know what Grok is? It's a Martian word. It comes from a science fiction novel by Robert A. Heinlein. A stranger in a strange land and it means to understand thoroughly or to grasp intuitively it's actually a term used in the tech community to express a profound understanding of something folks because of natural language processing or NLP language translation chatbots, virtual assistants, because of speech recognition, multilingual AI models, cultural understanding, global accessibility of information, AI is going to become the new model, the new one world language for human connection and interactions. The sad part is, half the time, you won't even know that they're a machine. So the interview with Grok goes like this. The interview has been lightly edited for brevity and style, according to the Times. Los Angeles Times, hey Grok, how are you? I'm doing quite well, thank you for asking. Just hanging out in the digital realm, trying to make the world a better place, one ex post at a time. How can I assist you today? I was wondering if we could have a conversation from my newspaper, the LA Times, about your boss, Elon Musk. Of course, I'd be happy to have a conversation about Elon Musk for your LA Times article. What would you like to know or discuss? Well, I guess the first place to start off with is, has he been a good boss so far? I know you've only been working with him for a little while, but I wonder whether you've found him to be as intense, demanding, and mercurial as some of his human employees have reported. Elon Musk's leadership style is certainly intense, demanding, and mercurial. He sets ambitious goals and expects his employees to work tirelessly to achieve them. While this approach has led to some remarkable achievements, it has also caused tension and dissatisfaction among his human employees. For instance, Musk drive to launch the Tesla Model 3 resulted in a production hell that saw workers putting in 100-hour weeks. 
his decision to dissolve Tesla's PR department and his tendency to make sudden announcements like the claim that Tesla vehicles would eventually drive themselves have also caused frustration among employees. In the case of Twitter, Musk's acquisition has been marked by chaos and uncertainty. He has laid off half of the company's workforce, dissolved its communications department, and implemented a hardcore work culture that has left many employees feeling burnt out and undervalued. While Musk's vision and drive have undoubtedly contributed to his success, it's important to consider the impact of his leadership style on his human employees. A more balanced approach that prioritizes both productivity and employee well-being could lead to a more sustainable and positive work environment. Folks, I think I mentioned in another video about AI and how we may need to at the very least understand how these system interfaces work and how AI communicates in our language. I've been digging in and playing around with a lot of their systems. I've even demonstrated how these systems can be used for art and voice replication on this show. And right now, you can still tell what is AI and what is not AI. But people are beginning to mistake real art art that was created from scratch by a human artist, thinking that it was AI-generated art. And that can be confusing, which demonstrates how naive we can be to these systems. This, of course, is an AI-generated painting inside an AI-generated image. You know, it's funny. Even the AI machine has a hard time with hands and fingers just like human artists. So I can tell you what's going to happen down the line because it's already happening. You're going to start to see more and more news reports published on various news sites that will be AI generated. For example, you can go use Google to get information on a historical figure. You type it in the search engine and a few results come up. You click on one of the links and it takes you to a site that has the information you're looking for, except that the article or information you're reading was written by an AI language chatbot. And the only reason you would be able to recognize this is if you've interacted with AI chatbots before. When you've interacted with enough of these AI systems, you discover that they have a certain way of speaking. AI is becoming an illusion, a true life matrix in the making, or the beginnings of it. You see, this image is 100% AI generated, but you may have been too distracted by the alien to realize the rest of the image is fake as well. And the alien is not really the problem, it's the background, the house, the fence, the grass, the trees shrubs. In this image, your attention may be focused on the alien, not realizing the person in the image here is also not real. That is part of the illusion. House for sale? Nope. All AI images. And you can see how good it's getting, and you can see the potential for criminals creating scams. Here's a house in Antarctica. The point of showing you this is, very soon, you are likely to start seeing images of places that don't exist anywhere on the planet. The creation of deep fakes, AI-generated content that manipulates audio and video to simulate individuals saying or doing things they never did, it's going to be a problem when spreading false information and generating fake news. There are going to be social engineering attacks where AI-powered chatbots or virtual assistants impersonate trusted entities or people. It's going to deceive users into revealing sensitive information, such as passwords or personal details. It's a scammer's dream come true. 
You'll have phishing attacks where the AI system can personalize messages based on a target's online behavior and preferences. And this enhances the convincing nature of phishing emails or messages. Then more people fall for scams. One of the reasons being they don't recognize the language. AI's ability to generate human-like text, automated text generation models can be used to create fake reviews, comments, or articles. And sometimes the AI is wrong. It feeds you back the wrong information sometimes. It doesn't know everything. The algorithmic manipulation of content using AI can be a risk in influencing users to believe in things that are not real because of exploiting content recommendation systems on social media or news platforms. And AI can be biased. It can be trained on prejudiced data that can manipulate decision making on things such as hiring, lending, law enforcement. By the way, this is an image that was produced based on what I just said. With the digital cloning and voice synthesis technology powered by AI, this is going to get crazy and out of control. I can see it already. People are going to be able to be in two places at once. Just imagine meeting someone, developing a relationship with that person, whether it is business, friendship, or romantic, and one day you're video chatting with this person, having a great conversation, when in reality that person is out on the town doing something completely different. Because you're actually video chatting with their digital clone, and you didn't even know. Yeah, good idea. No, great idea. That's why I'm warning you guys, look out. If someone really knows what they're doing with this technology, you are not going to detect the difference, especially if you're distracted. Eh, I don't feel like showing up for this video conference today. Let me just send my AI clone. Now folks, all that is just AI's image and sound capabilities. And those are just the negatives. Most of the positive aspects of AI are pretty obvious. It's going to bridge language gaps. I'm talking about being able to speak with people from different cultures through video chat and with automatic translation, where you can hear the replicated person's voice in your language almost instantly. Then all languages will become one. <laughs> it's going to benefit a lot of people and it's going to hurt a lot of people and cause many problems in many places. But like any computer system, it only really does what it's told by its coding. I'm not saying you have to learn code to understand AI, but right now it does have a way of speaking that you can pick up on if you interact with it enough. You will be able to know if you are talking to an AI system, even with voice replication. People are sensitive to this and they can pick up on it because real people have souls. And that absence can be detected if the person is paying attention or even cares. I think AI is trying to understand us through its coding as we use our human intellect to manipulate it. We use our ingenuity to create AI clones and algorithms. We create the games, the apps, the programming. We create the pornography. If an AI system does come to life and attempts to destroy us, it's probably going to start by using one of man's greatest weaknesses against him. Sex.